Hello everyone, this is Kodak giving you game one in a best of three series between Happy and Reen. Game one taking place here on Tall Dream Altar. Unfortunately, I do not have any additional games from my clan wars, so I will just have to go ahead and do some um, other games in between my own clan war, and hopefully you guys are enjoying the clan wars. If you guys are enjoying it, make sure to let your friends know, post it up on the channels. The more viewers I get, the more, yeah, the more views I get, the more I can do this and the more I can fund this. And the more fun it is for me just to be able to give something back to the community. Anyways, we have Happy spawning as the yellow Terran player here at the 2 o'clock position. Meanwhile, we have Reen spawning as the light blue or cyan Protoss player over here at the 4 and a half or 5 o'clock position of Tall Dream Altar. I do not believe this is the official version. Um, there's just so many versions of Tall Dream Altar out there that it becomes very, very difficult to try and keep track of which version is what and how the games are going to be played out. Now, Tall Dream Altar is a very large map where the spawning locations are rather far away from each other. So I expect a longer game. Um, rushes are very, very difficult to pull off here on Tall Dream Altar as now Happy building up barracks over here by his command center and not leaving it over here by the front door so this is going to be a rather wide choke point that he will have to defend later meanwhile if you take a look at reen reen is just going to be getting in a gateway in just a moment as soon as he starts warping in that gateway is he he's actually going for an early nexus excuse me wow at 15 over 19 18 food right now and he is going to be going for a nexus first that is a very gutsy move especially since that pylon is nowhere nearby and with that pylon not being anywhere nearby, he is not going to have any ways to um, build any front door or at least get some photon cannons at that front door as uh, Marines do have a decent amount of range and trying to build a front door against a Terran player is rather difficult. Um, Marines and Marauders, all early units with range, very, very um, useful units. We are going to have the probe now make its way over as well. We are upgrading to an orbital command. Happy playing a very consistent um, build order and um, not trying to adjust to Tall Dream Altar. Tall uh, Marine, however, um, I do not believe he would try this sort of gutsy maneuver on any map except for Tall Dream Altar. Um, maybe Terminus Ray as well. Both are rather large maps, but the scouting probe has been destroyed. SCV is going to be a while before it scouts out this Nexus, and the Nexus will already be up by this point. The Gateway may have a Zealot already trained into this location here, but the SCV moving much more or slightly quicker than a Zealot um, should be able to at least scout out this early Nexus and know that Reen is not going to be doing any early, um, early pressure with that one Nexus, but instead have a very economic um, advantage in the early portion of this game. Probes are not being transferred over, even though we are starting to get diminishing returns here. Um, so I'm curious as to how that's going to be working out. He should probably be chrono boosting the Nexus here to try to get more and more probes. And as soon as that SCV comes up, we'll see what Happy tries to do. Happy already building a bunker thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know what my opponent is going. And as soon as he sees this Nexus, he may realize, wait, I don't even need this bunker. I can just salvage it for additional minerals since my opponent does have a very very early expansion at this stage in the game we are going to go into hellions and a starport now so this is more of a 1-1-1 one, one, one build and happy not really responding to the fact that his opponent is going for an early nexus he's more sitting down saying i'm gonna play my game of starcraft 2 and i'm gonna play it my style and not try to change it up just because my opponent already has a very, very, very early expansion. We are getting an early Hellion now. That Hellion can perhaps try to get some damage onto those probes. There is one Stalker already. And Stalkers, very, very effective against Hellions. Even though um, they move a little bit slower than a Hellion, the Hellion just cannot stop and shoot in time in order to shut down those probes. But now we should be getting Cloaking Research and now into Banshees. So Happy, uh, now very much behind in the economic game, sitting on 27 Harvesters, 22 probes compared to 31. So his SCV count, SCV's production perhaps had slowed down for quite a while now, as we are now getting a front door here, and this is not looking good at all. That Hellion trying to get some damage. I do not see a robotics facility, though, so that this Hellion may be able to get some damage onto some of these probes. No, only one probe really suffering any critical damage at all as the Banshee now being trained. So one Banshee now being added into this robotics facility now coming online and Reen is going to be able to get a very early observer 
or an early enough observer to be able to stop this cloaked banshee even though he did do a fast expansion a nexus first here on tall dream altar you can still see that happy not playing all that well sitting at 33 over 35 consistently food locked as the banshee now making its way out i don't know what i'm happy i believe he actually trained for the banshee first as opposed or he went for the cloaking research first instead of the banshee and that's always going to be an issue there stalkers are now getting some damage but the stalkers are going to be able to put pressure onto the factory and not really have any issue there and now try to pull back scvs are going to be able to repair as this banshee now looking to deal some damage but it is not really going to be able to do that much observer already being trained and this banshee's harassment is going to fall on deaf ears not going to really um, capitalize on much of the harassment advantage. You can see that this set of mineral patches is not mining currently, but that is still not going to help him all too much. Another probe may get taken down up to three, four kills, but a probe for a, a Banshee to really be worth it, he needs to get into the realm of seven to eight kills on his units. The Observer now quit, um, trying to cape up with that Banshee, but the Banshee does move a little bit more quickly. And then the Observer, he doesn't need to, um, he needs to outrun the Observer and the Stalkers, and the Stalkers do move a little bit faster as well as those ooh the banshee now taking even more damage now hiding off in the brush over here the observer is in the air and he switched banshees and now coming in with a fresh one but there is already a second observer nearby and that banshee is going to be forced to pull away once more the banshees now going to return home only getting six kills off of two banshees and those banshees did take a decent amount of damage as well the observer is still close by enough and now happy's days are numbered with that banshee harassment you can see an orbital command coming into play now and um, perhaps trying to get back into this into this economic game 30 harvesters three mills against 45 probes um, harvesting count is about even at this stage but that's because there's an additional mule on the field rather than one per each so you now taking a look at the losses you can see that reen definitely lost more but he's also mined more at this time so you can see that he's also spent a significant amount more on his economy and he's and he's in a very good position into this mid game he knows that he'll he'll be able to build up a larger army faster he has the observers and in order to shut down those banshees and if this turns into a uh, just a game of pure attrition i believe that reen will be able to take the lead just because he has a larger standing army now with more food coming into play more gateways now coming online and perhaps going into yeah eight gateways so as soon as um, a protoss player goes, goes in the eight gateways he, he's able to train up i believe what's of 30 to 45 food a minute from just those gateways and um, training up the stalkers the zealots and those sentries going to be very very beneficial uh, even if he doesn't chrono boost those gateways he's able to just get a lot of units as well meanwhile back into the base of happy happy doesn't have nearly as many production buildings four barracks and one starport with the reactor that is not enough to really keep up with the six gateways and the robotics facility especially now that colossi are being added to the group the banshee is now back over here looking to get some damage but really un unable to as you can see one of those banshees is already destroyed two observers this banshee's days are essentially numbered as it's just going to sit here and not really be able to do very much at all reen may want to actually try to go for that um the observer speed um, as the observer speed would allow that banshee or um, just force that banshee to always run away as the observer is able to catch up and now you can see an aggressive move by reen reen now making his way out with a lot of stalkers and i believe that this is the tip tipping point happy scouting in or the tipping point has already been reached T happy scouting in the wrong direction initially not seeing the very very fast the nexus and then not responding with the command center of his own hoping that his hoping that his banshees would be able to get him back into the game and unfortunately they did not and now you're gonna have a colossus knocking on your front door eight gateways powering right here you can see five zealots already warping in more units still warping in as well and as those zealots are getting added to this army for, uh, what a 6,000 6,500 mineral army or 6,500 resource army compared to three it doesn't even seem like a fair fight. Even with two-point defense drones and Vikings to try to counter, this is not going to work out at all. You can see the Colossi now coming in, able to finish off multiple units very easily. The Vikings going after those Colossus as quickly as they can. 
point defense drone already um, out of energy here and both sides still battling now the stalkers SCVs were on auto repair and now getting a lot of damage in. and now the point defense drone auto turret joining in on the battle as well and happy holding this line pretty well so far as the units are now continuing to engage, the Vikings are now in ground mode. And now SCV is coming off the mineral line as well. But those Stalkers are going to be able to do even more as the Zealots going to act as a decent meat shield. Taking, um, taking a look at the Harvester count, 32 compared to 53. Um, even though Happy was able to uh, destroy a lot of those units of Reen, Reen is still going to come back in with a superior number of forces in just a second. And now he just has to sit back, relax, knowing that he has a much stronger economy. If he tries to take an expansion at this time, that would also be a very, very smart call. Smart call. This expansion, very easy to establish um, over here um, for Reen at this stage in the game. And now a new fresh Colossus joining in on this battle. The Colossus does not have the extended thermal lance ranges. An extended thermal lances so he's not going to have that range of nine that would have been very very nice and then just suffer a lot of damage from those vikings you can see the colossus now coming in and bunkers trying to be replaced marauders scvs are on auto repair the colossus is doing a lot of damage towards an empty bunker at this stage and now another colossus taken down and wow happy able to fend this attack off once again the losses much much higher now for reen but uh, somehow Happy is able to fend off the attack still, but he cannot do this for very much longer. You can see his production. He needs to get more SCVs, unable to really double train SCVs continually. As the Stalker is now putting out pressure as well, the Stalker is now pushing, pulling back. And it almost feels like Reen is getting a little bit sloppy with his units. He's not, he's not throwing up the Guardian Shields. He's not preventing or laying down force fields to stop those units from being, or the SCVs from being able to repair these bunkers. The bunkers do not have the armor plating. Um, if you are wondering why those bunkers are so, so durable. Colossus now coming in. There's the Guardian Shield. And Zealots now just simply rushing in. And if at first you don't succeed, if you cannot win by brute force, consider the fact that you are not using enough brute force. And it looks like that is exactly what Reen is going to be doing here. Um, happy fending off, getting a lot more kills per unit. But now that Reen has such a dominant army, there's the GG by Happy. So Happy being able to fend off a large army for quite some time, but still unable to um, turn the tide in favor of him. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between Reen and Happy here on Tall Dream Altar. This is game one in a series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.